Good morning. I was uh, given an opportunity that I am happy to take to just take just a few moments to tell a little bit about uh, what God has done for me, or at least a small taste of it. I could go on forever, and I promise you I won't. And uh, sort of an episode or a, a really a zone in my life where things that I never imagined could possibly be took place. My starting point is a, a time in my life which was anything but happy. And my conversion and God grasping me, thankfully, was at a time just soon enough that I didn't end it all, and that had been my desire, a determined desire for an extended period of time. Uh, basically, it goes something like this. My starting point will be having been as a nine going on 10 year old, being wrenched from a country where my memories are a very happy life into a redirection in a direction where through a lot of tears and frustrations I prepared as my family was moving from my country of birth, uh, namely Australia, up to live in Taiwan where I was to spend the rest of my growing up and schooling years and having that then wrenched from my boyhood purview uh, because of a disaster that happened in our family along the way uh, during the months that we initially were to spend four days, it became half a year, where we were stranded in the then independent country of Hong Kong as we anticipated going to Taiwan, never got there, and ended up in, of all places, Buffalo, New York. Yeah, that's the city that known historically as the armpit of the East. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's where I ended up. And, and when I say these were unhappy times, they were profoundly unhappy times, deeply unhappy times. This is the beginning of, of the testimony I'll give today, where by the age of 10, I had already lived on four different continents. That's exciting in one sense, and eye-opening and enjoyable, and yet for a household that was already stressed in other ways, it was a disaster. It really was. And moving to the United States to what was supposed to be for about a year, while the health and psychological needs of my self-destructive mother were attended to, and that's what landed us there, we just never left. So we're here, and I'm here, and thanks to what, if I wasn't a believer in the providence of God, I would simply describe as a, a strange twist of fate, okay? Uh, nothing personal, please. But frankly, I hated America from the start. And, and actually, in reasons you'll understand, I was a 10-year-old. I was a 10-year-old who sounded odd. I spoke English, but in a weird kind of way, what some of my not-so-close friends called, you sound like a sissy, okay? That was their take on the way I talked. I dressed just a little bit different. I didn't even own long pants when we moved to snowy Buffalo. I had shorts and sandals, you know? Um, I saw things differently. I felt things differently. I perceived things differently. And you know how it is with kids. Kids are cruel, even when they're not trying to be. And so in these formative years of my life, what had already been a wrenching and a breaking and an observing of, of things that I, I, hope, I hope you don't get to see, although I know some of you have seen these kinds of things, was a profound hatred of my environment of the kids who bullied me, and there was a good share of them. I, I'm bigger than most of them now, so it doesn't matter. But back then, I, I didn't yet know how to fight back. And the ostracism and the strangeness and the foreignness and the implied shame that comes with that, that whole experience and the self-destructive tendencies that it encouraged in me, if I could have found a painless way to end it all, I would happily have done so. And in the middle of all of that, I was exposed in high school, public high school, in the city of the armpit of the East, some Christian believer teachers. And they were subtle about it. They, they were actually known. People knew who they were. They were subtle about it. They were to, it was a public school. You can only do so much in a public school. And the way these people, it happened to be a couple of men, it could have been women as well, but a couple of men that were at least were the, the, the known ones, were just amazing in the way that they loved people unconditionally, and I could see that and I could feel it, and I was drawn to it. I was hungry for it, 
Even before I knew what I was hungry for, I could feel it with these people. We were attracted to these kind of people and their thoughtfulness and their care, and, and they're, they're just care and handling themselves in a public environment that was probably already putting them under a microscope. And they shared the gospel, and there was an interesting question that happened, and by the way, if you wanna know the way to a man's heart is through his stomach, especially for me if it's ice cream. Um, I was invited out for a milkshake with a couple of friends, uh, student friends by one of the teachers, and he just talked about his faith, and that didn't mean a whole lot to me, but he asked me a question, and I've never forgotten the question, nor my mental response to it. It. that was the beginning of a whole new direction I could not have I thought it was just a milkshake vanilla milkshake at a fast food restaurant how harmless can that be and he asked me Jonathan he said do you know why Jesus came to earth and I said oh, I know the answer to that that's easy he came to set a good example and the man who was with us, a high school music teacher said to me no Jonathan he said Jesus came primarily for the purpose of dying and my first thought was, that is the stupidest thing I have ever heard. Who comes to life for the purpose of dying? But you, you know now, of course, what, why that made sense, and also how it would come over the years ahead, and, a, and a, a fairly private but dramatic conversion that happened in the days to follow that, where I'm going to use the words that we just sang a few moments ago from Psalm 113. Uh, I was lifted from the dust, and being needy was able to grieve no more being raised up from the pit that circumstances uh, had found me in. And to me to come to faith in Christ, which I did in the days to follow, was to gain love, consideration, breathing room, and the really powerful lifting of an emotional weight that was crushing me. Crushed me for some years at that point. And that was freedom. And that's my brief glimpse of what the Lord has done for me. Thank you very much.